take your Bibles, and I guess you could go to Numbers 15.32 for now. All right, so last week we looked at the thickness. We started our honey test, right? And we checked the thickness. Uh, we did the thickness test, and we found that the modern versions, unfortunately, uh, appeared to be watered down in some places. And we only scratched the surface. Uh, it, by no means was it in depth, but just the ones that we did look at, uh, it didn't seem like uh, the Lord was dwelling in the thick darkness or the thick cloud of those modern versions. So today, we're going to go to the next portion of the honey test, which is checking for stickiness. Remember I referenced that article, and the article, uh, when you're looking for pure honey versus adulterated honey, the article said that if the honey feels sticky when you rub it between your fingers, it's adulterated. And the reason for that is because the added sweeteners make it sticky. So from that, I gathered, if, if this thing about honey, it, you know, if it goes all the way through here, and you know, God does give us things in nature so that, he can see, so that we can see things about the creation, things about heaven, and by now, hopefully, you know what honey represents. It represents the words of God, the pleasant words, um, words of wisdom, instruction, understanding, knowledge, discretion, all that good stuff. So today, we are going to uh, magnify a word or two, and we're going to see how the modern versions hold up versus the King James Bible and which one is sticky or stickier compared to the other, okay? Okay. And I uh, kind of floated this last time that sticky is not in the King James Bible, praise the Lord. Uh, it's not, but there are words like stick, sticks, and sticketh. So there is the concept of something sticking or being sticky in the Bible, but that word itself is not in the King James Bible. Now, the word stick occurs 21 times in the King James Bible in all its forms. And the first mention is in Numbers 15.32. I briefly mentioned this last week, but in Numbers 15.32, the Bible says, And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And we all know what happens next. That guy's he's getting stoned. Amen? And that's because of Exodus 35, verse 3, where the Bible says, And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded. Remember, this thing's all about words. Words matter. That ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And then if you look in Numbers 15, at um, so we were in verse 32, right? That's the first mention in your King James Bible of the word stick. And most of you know about the law of first mention, but if you don't, it is one of the greatest tools that you could have in your arsenal for studying the Bible. You do a word search, a word study on something, and the first mention of a word will set the tone and the theme for how that word is to be looked at and interpreted throughout the rest of Scripture. So first mention is incredibly important. So Numbers 15, 32, we see that guy gathering sticks. And like I said last week, when I was a kid, there was a word. You can't say it anymore, but there was a word for a bundle of sticks, uh, specifically sticks that are gathered for the fire. That's where that word comes from, just so you know. And in like Britain, England, all, they still use that word. They, for cigarettes, they use that word to this day. So it's not some hate preacher. I'm just telling you what it means, okay? Um, so Numbers 15, look at verse 30. This, this is why that guy got stoned. But the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Verse 31, why? Because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment. 
that soul shall utterly be cut off, his iniquity shall be upon him. So the first mention of this word stick, and we can already see this is a bad thing. This, this, and this, this guy gathering these sticks, this was bad. You don't want to gather something when God tells you to leave it alone. You don't want to add to something when God says, don't do anything else. On this day, don't do anything. It's a day unto the Lord. All right, now, uh, just quickly here. Uh, the ESV, in this verse 32, it does say gathering sticks. So, good job, ESV. You get, but you do get half credit because you still omit words like sodomites. I can't find the, so I can find one of uh, that thing, sticks, that bundle of sticks, but I can't find it in another. So you get half credit. We'll give you half credit. The NIV, unfortunately, gets no credit because it says gathering wood. Gathering wood. So uh, that destroys that first mention of sticks already. I mean, stick is a pretty general term, right? But wood is even more general. You, he could be, when I was a kid, we used to go uh, have bonfires on the beach. We would go to the back of a Safeway and look for a pallet of wood. Yeah. It was, we stole it. It was wrong, but we would do it. That's wood. That's gathering wood. Was he out getting a pallet? I mean, just you got to think. So, okay, to just further drive this point home, negative context of the word stick. So stick, remember, it occurs 21 times in all forms. First mention is negative. Some guy dies because he breaks the words of God, the commandment of God. Its context is negative 12 times. I'm just going to quickly go through these, but I wrote these down if you want to look them up later. Uh, 1 Kings 17, 10 and 12, you have the widow woman of Zarephath gathering sticks to burn in the fire of her and her son's last supper before they die. 2 Kings 6, 6, you have the broken, borrowed axe. Remember that guy? Oh, alas, master, it was borrowed. Job 33, 21, you have Elihu referring to Job's bones sticking out. So I'm telling you what the scriptures say about this word. Forget what dictionaries or professors tell you. What say it the scriptures? Here, how about this one? Job 41.17, all of a sudden Leviathan pops up. Leviathan sticky scales, which that verse set calls his pride. His sticky scales are his pride. Remember, they're like sealed. They're like right. You can't put anything. Even air can't get in between them. They're stuck together so much. Psalm 38.2, you have David post Bathsheba. And he's talking about how God's arrows are sticking in him. Lam Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8, you have the siege of Jerusalem where it says their, vis their vis visage is blacker than coal, their skin cleaveth to their bones, it is withered, become like a stick. Ezekiel 29.4, the Lord prophesying judgments historically against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophetically against the great dragon, Satan. Twice, the Lord mentions... Satan's sticky scales and the fish that are stuck to him. Isn't that interesting? I mean, we, all we did was look up stick. I don't know what this is going to be, right? We're just checking for stickiness, right? Okay. Well, the King James Bible says, hey, stickiness, stick. Watch out for that word stick that has the word tick in it. Like those little bloodsucker guys that will kill you or your dog. Or ick. Like you gotta, there's more to this than you might think. Like the Lord who teaches little children, just he'll teach you too, smart professors, don't worry. He embeds within a word other words and other meanings so that you will subconsciously make certain uh, connotations or attach certain meanings to them. Okay, the last mention, so I, the, we got the first mention. It actually goes... Further than that, there's the law of first mention, further mention, and last mention. 
So even if you just got first and last mentioned down, that thing, that thing will clear up for you a lot on that word. The last mention of stick in the King James Bible is in Acts 28.3 when Paul gathers a bundle of sticks for the fire and gets bit by a viper. Remember that? So the first and the last mention talk about gathering sticks for a fire. And then in between you got a bunch of references about Satan and viper and dragon. and It's interesting, right? That's interesting stuff. Okay, then I found eight neutral references all in Ezekiel 37, verses 16 to 20. And the reason I put that as neutral is because that's about the valley of dry bones. Um, but then uh, it, it prophesies of God restoring Israel, right? The restoration of Israel, which doesn't take place until the millennium. So it's like kind of good because like, hey, we're going to be restored in the millennium. But then like you're looking at dry bones. I picture myself like teleporting throughout history into these scenes. Like I just, I drop down in this verse and what's the immediate context? What am I seeing here? And so there it's like good because God's going to restore them, but bad because like a bunch of dry bones. And then we know what they got to go through before they get to the millennium too, right? Okay, now, so it's overwhelmingly negative. You got some neutral. And then there's one positive reference. I mentioned it last week. Uh, there, you can turn there, Proverbs 18.24. There's one there's always an exception to the rule, and actually the exception always proves the rule. So Proverbs 18, go over there, and we're going to look at verse 24. Proverbs 18, verse 24, the one positive uh, context of the verse in which the word stick occurs, and the King James Bible says... A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So I always took that to be positive. You know, the, actually, when I first read it, because I was not like I was always like kind of a sharp tongued, just like sarcastic, like giving everyone a hard time. That the first part of that verse, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. That one I'd be like, oh, man, I got to be friendlier. <laughs> now I'm a Christian. I want to be I want to have friends. I got to be friendlier. So maybe that one's like neutral, right? That's just a, a matter of fact statement. But then there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's good right there. That's, I use that all the time. So there's always an exception to the rule. So it's balanced right here, even on a negative word. So that's the word stick. That's what the King James Bible has to say about the word stick. Now, let's look at the NIV. Remember our, remember our logic, right? It should be... Uh, if it's bad, if it's sticky, that means some things were added and that's not good. It's adulterated honey. So NIV, what do you think? How, how many, is it going to be more or less times in the King James Bible, if, if you had to guess? More? Less? You think less? Less? Okay. Well, actually, it's interesting. You're partly right, but the NIV has the word stick 25 times. So remember, it says if it's sticky in between your fingers, it's because the added sweeteners. So what I took to mean from that is the stickier it is, the more adulterated it is. So just on the surface, if you get nothing else, NIV has stick more times than the King James Bible, which is 21 times 777. So that's nice and complete. But this one's got 25 times. Now, the first mention, remember, the first mention is very important, right? Um, in our Bible, it is. Honestly, I don't know about the new ones. I just started using them, so give me some time and I'll let you know. But the first mention in the NIV is not here, not here, not here. It's not any of these here. It actually is not until... 1 Samuel 17, 43. Go ahead and turn over to there. 1 Samuel 17, 43. We do not. I wonder why. We're going to find out. 1 Samuel 17, 43 is the first mention. So the brother actually already noticed something. The NIV has 
the word stick occurring in a verse in which the King James Bible does not. And actually, that's the first place in which it's mentioned in the NIV. So that's interesting. So first mention is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 43. And now let's see what this says. Um, so I'm going to tell you what it says in the NIV. And you tell me if... Uh, you, you tell me how that looks in your King James Bible. In the NIV, it says, talking about this is David and Goliath, David approaching Goliath. And it says, Goliath, he said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. So NIV says sticks right there, referring to David. But your King James Bible says what word? Staves. Okay. Kind of like froward, like you're saying. I'm like, what does that mean? So let me look it up. Okay. So Goliath, a type of the Antichrist, here in this verse, the context, remember, first mention. So this is going to set the tone, right? This is like really important here. So the first mention of that word, you have a type of the Antichrist questioning and cursing David, who's a type of Christ, and uh, he's specifically cursing what's in his hand which if you look at verse 40, back up to verse 40, it says, and this is David, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag. So remember, David's a shepherd at this point. So he has a shepherd's staff. Uh, and Goliath, the type of Antichrist, is cursing what's in his hand, the staff, the shepherd's staff. He's, uh, he's saying, oh, you brought sticks. Remember what sticks can mean? Oh, you brought sticks to the battle. He's saying, you're sticky. You're like that tick. You're a bloodsucker, huh? And so the NIV right here, knowingly or unknowingly, I don't know, by changing one single word in the King James Bible, has broken their own necks. They don't know it. Or maybe they do. But I think the average NIV reader doesn't know. So that's why I'm bringing it to, to them. Observe that if the NIV Bible student were to perform his own word study on stick, he would begin at 1 Samuel 17, 43, right? Where David is bundled up with the sticks. Remember all, what that has to say? What the King James Bible has to say about that word? And uh, the Bible student would arrive at this destination. So uh, don't turn there yet. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. So... Uh, the King James Bible does have that word there for sticks, okay? So they don't change it there. The NIV says, But now they are blacker than soot. They are not recognized in the streets. Their skin has shriveled on their bones. It has become as dry as a stick. Talking about the siege of Jerusalem. Just keep that in the back of your mind, all right? Lamentations 4.8. That's where you're going to end up when you run the references uh, here. Now, the King James Bible does not say sticks in 1 Samuel 17, 43. We already saw that. It says the word staves, right? Uh, verse 40, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. So that just defined what a scrip is for you, by the way. It's a shepherd's bag. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine, and the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? All right, so what is the difference between a stick and a stave? I mean, are they just the same thing, you know? So, staves occurs 49 times in your King James Bible. That's 7 times 7. The first mention is in relation to the most important physical object in the Old Testament, the Ark of God. Its purpose is to bear God's pure instruments of the tabernacle. So it's not just a stick. Okay? Turn over to Exodus 25, 13. Exodus 25, 13. And what do we have here? This is the first mention. So we're using the first mention again. But now we're using it on the word staves. So... I encourage it, everyone can do this. Like this is not some, you don't got to go to Bible school to learn this. Amen. The Bible should be your school. Exodus 25, 13, the first mention of this word staves. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. 
And then I mentioned this last week, but Dr. Ruckman's note uh, for this verse says, The shittim wood is supposed to be the acacia wood in Egypt and the Sinai Peninsula. It is close-grained and insect-proof. As a type of Christ, it is incorruptible. So we got a special stick. Maybe there's a reason why the King James Bible called it a stave, not a stick. Now, suppose I did a word study. Remember, Pastor did that teaching on gold, how awesome that was? Suppose I did a word study on the word gold. I come to this verse, right? It says, uh, overlay them with gold. I come to this verse, and I see that among other things, God used staves overlaid with gold in the furnishing of his sanctuary. Not knowing what staves meant either, I would then run the references on that word as well, which would lead me to 1 Samuel 17, 43, where I would find that the beloved King David is connected with staves. While I'm in the neighborhood, I might notice that in verse 42, it refers to David as ruddy. It says that uh, when, when Goliath, you might still be there, but when G Goliath saw he was like fair countenance and ruddy, he, despi he disdained him. He hated him for that. Not knowing what this <laughs> word meant either. So see, it, when you just admit how little you know and you ask God to show you, you'll be surprised what you'll find. So I don't know what ruddy means either, so I might run the references on that word as well. Finding that the word ruddy occurs four times. The first mention is in 1 Samuel 16, 12, the anointing of David as king. Next is when he's before Goliath here in this verse. Third, you can turn over there, Song of Solomon 5.10. The third occurrence is in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10. And uh, you Bible students know what that entails a lot of. You got the bride and the bridegroom, right? And we know who that bridegroom's a type of, amen? So Song of Solomon, if I can get over there, I'm stuck. Chapter 5, verse 10. So the next occurrence and the third occurrence of Ruddy, where the connection between David and the bridegroom is strengthened. Remember, David is a, one of the strongest types of Jesus Christ. Amen? So maybe this is important. Verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Remember what Saul was upset about? Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Remember that? So we got ruddy and the chiefest among ten thousand. Wow, that's pretty cool. His head is as the most fine gold. Okay, we, remember we saw staves and gold? Remember this whole thing, honey, that we're talking about is about gold. It's like into fine gold. So his head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. Verse 14, his hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. So a lot of gold, ruddy. Now look at this. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. So we got some wood. We got some wood. We got some gold. And we got ruddy. His mouth is most sweet. Oh, remember those sweet honey words? How sweet it is on your, on, on your lips? Yea, he is altogether lovely. So just by running a couple words, super simple, I was able, I, I'm, I'm making connections here in my mind as a Bible student. I'm like, wow, the staves, David, David, the Lord, okay, hang on to that. And the last mention, okay, so the last mention of the word ruddy, remember I told you about Lamentations 4, verse 8, right? Where we end up with uh, either version, right? Uh, go back over Lamentations 4, Lamentations 4, so right after Jeremiah, Remember, it's talking about those withered sticks and stuff like that. And Goliath called David the type of Christ, sticks. He, he refer, in the same verse, you see David and sticks, which ends you up at Lamentations 4, 8, talking about visage being blacker than a coal. 
except we just saw that he's white and ruddy. Skin, cleave it to their bones, withered, become like a stick. That's not good. I want to stay away from that. Well, the last mention of the word ruddy in your King James Bible is in Lamentations 4, verse 7. Almost the exact same place you end up. But look at this. Her Nazarites are purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. So I did all that to show you that notice that while we, all, we almost arrive at the same exact destination with these different versions, with this one word that was changed, King James Bible, verse 7, NIV, verse 8, through cross-referencing, the path we took to get there is different, and more importantly, the conclusion we arrive at is much different. Not only does the King James Bible establish the negative meaning of stick, the King James Bible also establishes staves as a positive item in its first mention. It reveals a golden nugget about David, who was a lowly shepherd boy, so like a stave of shittim wood, yet he was overlaid with gold as a king. Its last mention is connected with the Lord Jesus Christ, the lowly son of David, and yet... He was overlaid with divine gold as king of kings and lord of lords. The NIV changes the location of sticks first and last mention. It's not the same as King James Bible. The NIV adds nine verses, removes three verses, removes a mention in Ezekiel 37, 16, changes Proverbs 18, 24. Remember the one positive exception? Do you know what the NIV does to that verse? it changes it to a neutral verse. It says, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. Does that sound positive or negative? That sounds negative to me. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So they balance out. You got one bad part of that verse, one good part. So now this guy's neutral. We got a false balance going on here. Okay, that's not all uh, the NIV does. Uh, it changes stick, the word stick. To, the, to a rod and changes the following pure words to stick or sticks. That'll be the words staves, cleave, cleaveth, staff, draw. It changes the rod of my son to every such stick. It changes firebrand and brand to burning stick. Man, that's deep right there. Man, oh, where's my burning stick at? It changes all caps branch, all caps branch. You know what that, who that's talking about when it's all caps? All caps branch to uppercase branch. So like, you know, in my father's house or many rooms. You can have many rooms if you want. King James Bible says mansions. Uh, and it's interesting because your computer passwords are oftentimes case sensitive, aren't they? Why do you think that this this book would be any different. Amen. Good. You think that's not a big deal to take B R A N C A? He's a branch. And just branch. Yeah. All right, let's continue on staves there. Staves, now, now comes the, the nuggets. I had to lay a little bit of a framework there just to, I want to expose to you they're different. You're missing things. You're missing nuggets. And, and if, you, if you think you missed something already, check this out. More on the word staves. The word staves occurs seven times in the Gospels. Jesus, when sending out his disciples, instructs them to take nothing for their journey, including staves. Why doesn't he say, don't take any sticks with you? Don't pick up any sticks on the way, man. You might get stoned, you know? Remember that guy in Numbers 15? No, he, said, he makes the distinction staves. The other five times deal with the betrayal and arrest of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in them, he, the son of David, stave, remember he's called staves, the son of David asked the multitude, remember Goliath, he, he asked David, he, he points his attention at David, the Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't go straight at Judas. He asked the multitude, with Judas in the mix, he knew it was Judas, obviously, but he asked the multitude, 
with the son of perdition present right there. Almost the exact same rhetorical question that Goliath asked David back in 1 Samuel 17, 43, but in this way. Uh, go over to Matthew 26. You're about to get, you, if you stayed awake this long, you're about to get a huge blessing. Much study is a weariness to the flesh. I understand that, but hey, man, the, 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 the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I understand that, but hang in there, man. It's coming. All right, Matthew 26, verses 55 and 50, uh, look at verse 55. In that same hour said Jesus in the, uh, to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? Mark 14, 48. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? Luke 22, verses 52 and 53. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves? So three times the Lord Jesus Christ says staves. And hopefully you're getting the picture here. You're seeing what's going on. Oftentimes, Satan and the Lord, it's like they're like, in, you got to read between the lines, man. They're going back and forth with each other in a deeper way that the average reader is going to see. The first mention of stick has, uh, of staves, sorry, has Goliath, the Antichrist type, talking to Jesus Christ type, David. Then you got the Lord Jesus Christ, the last mention, Luke 22, but you got the Lord Jesus Christ talking to, type, talking to the Antichrist, son of perdition, and he says the word staves too. Okay. So in the King James Bible, um, hopefully you'll see it right here. In the King James Bible, in those three verses... You see Jesus, and you see the word staves. Do you see it? Yeah. I try to make it obvious for you. Three times. I've heard the joyful sound. Jesus, Jesus stays. stays. <laughs> Jesus stays. Not stick. I wonder yeah. why. I wonder why they chose oh, stick. That's good, brother. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Now, first same. I. I, get, I want to just end it right there because when I saw that, I'm like, whoa. Like you ever drive up, uh, what is it, is it uh, not 680, 580? North, uh, 580 going over like to Tracy. And you know that there's uh, that person they put in, in the hill right there. They put the big cross. Have you ever seen that? And it, it said Jesus saves. You've been seeing Jesus staves your whole life and you didn't know it. There's a big T right there. It's like advertisers spend billions of dollars a year to put subliminal things in, adver in advertisements so that you buy their product. And the King James Bible is subliminally trying to tell the person reading the gospel, hey, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Three times right there. All right, so now that we have that, let's go back to 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. Wait, isn't this just us checking stickiness of honey? So we just did a word, we just ran the references on the word stick? Yeah, and look what happened. When you stay in the honey, and you seek the honey, and you ask the Lord to give you some honey, He'll show you some cool stuff, man, and we're not, it's not over yet. 1 Samuel 17. All right, so verse 43, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves, right? Okay, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword, and with the spear, and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Say, I don't need a sword or spear or shield, boy. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. 
and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses, uh, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that the, there is a God in Israel, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth. 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 Staves. Saveth. The same letters in staves, obviously saves, and saveth. So the New Testament's telling you Jesus saves. Jesus saves. David, who is the type, who is called staves. So in the one verse where Goliath's talking to him, you see David staves. Did David stave Israel that day? He sure did. He didn't stick them with some icky, sticky stuff. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. S-T-A-V-E is in both the words stave and saveth. NIV and ESV say, Remember what they say? You coming at me with sticks? And then later on they say the Lord saves. Thus destroying the cross reference, removing the divine subliminal messaging, and altogether breaking the scriptures yet again. That's not all. The King James Bible in 1 Samuel 17, 43 says, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with Staves. So, staves. Question mark, right? The Lord Jesus Christ says in Luke twenty two fifty two. Staves? Question mark. A question mark follows. Matthew twenty six fifty five. Staves for to take me? Question mark at the end. And in Mark 14, 48, staves to take me? Question mark. Do you see it yet? What if I told you that there's an actual, literal representation of a stave in each of these verses, further leading the reader to a deep scriptural truth. Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, 43, criticizes the stave of David, right? You coming at me with staves, boy? We saw those staves have to do with the ark of God, overlaid with gold. In verse 40, it says that David took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had. Brethren, do you know what a shepherd's staff looks like? I googled it and I duck duck goat it, all right? <laughs> One thing that they all had in common, can you guys see this? They all have that rounded top right there. That rounded top is, well, it can be used for a lot of things. You grab a leg of a sheep that's going astray. Sometimes if you need to, grab their neck, grab, you know, do a little something. Can be used for balance. Can be used against predators as a weapon. Can be used for all kinds of stuff. Staves? Question mark. You coming at me with staves? Question mark. And then what did Jesus say? Staves for to take me? Question mark. Me? Question mark. As David was the stave or staff of God, used mightily by God to deliver the children of Israel, kind of like Moses had that staff that he used to deliver Israel. You see how the types are lining up perfectly right there? So the Lord Jesus Christ, David, they were both holy, 
overlaid with gold, staves of shittim wood, incorruptible, bless God, incorruptible. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he had that divine nature. And let me see if I have this here. Okay. All right. Now, Mark 6, verse 8, the Lord Jesus Christ commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey. So remember, I showed you Matthew, Luke, uh, what did I show Matthew, Luke, John, what did I, I showed you three occurrences where he told them to, uh, or no, I showed you the ones where he said, it says both Jesus and staves in them. But on the verses where he's telling them, uh, you know, don't go without staves or anything. Mark 6, 8 says that he commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only. No script, no bread, no money in their purse. Hey, Christian, you got your saving staff on you? Save a staff. Do you see how he's throwing save in there again? He's throwing staff in there. They're right next to each other. All right, now lastly, let's look at Christ the shepherd's crook, a.k.a. the shepherd's long arm. Remember I was telling you about the curved top of the shepherd's uh, staff used to manage and catch sheep? Well, uh, it's, that is found as far back as Egyptian times. You'll see it a lot on those mummies, right? They're holding it there. It's got the curved top there. It's used to denote power and authority and often depicted in the hands of pharaohs. Job 26.13 says, By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Isaiah 27.1 says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Genesis 3.1 Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? First question in your Bible. Comes out of the mouth of the serpent. First mention of a question mark, and it's laid down by the idle shepherd. Zechariah eleven seventeen. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you guys might think between the Lord and Satan. So yeah, Moses shows up one day. God's like, all right, yeah. Remember, remember, remember you laid down your, your staff? You, you laid down your question mark? Here's my guy with his staff. Let's see how you, let's see how you do against him. All right, so now cross-reference that with Christ, the Lord's straightened shepherd's crook. Go over to Luke chapter 12, verse 50. Luke chapter 12, verse 50. Luke chapter 12, verse 50. I know it's, a li it's getting thick, eh, man? Is it thick in here? Remember before, thickness? It's thick, man. But hey, you put in the work and the Lord will give you a blessing. If you got nothing else, man, hopefully you got, man, that Jesus saves three times. Oh, man, I was like running the bases at home, freaking cursing out. All right. Okay, so we're talking about the shepherd's crook, a.k.a. the shepherd's long arm. That's what it's known as. And it can be traced back to pharaohs, Egyptian times. We looked at some crooked serpents, which, you know, that staff kind of looks like a serpent, you know. Uh, okay, Luke 12, 50, the Lord Jesus Christ says, But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? And notice there, there's an exclamation point. A straightened uh, punctuation mark. Look at the it. So you might ask yourself, what is he talking about? What's that baptism? Well, it's the baptism of suffering, plainly, that he's getting ready to go through on the cross for you and I. And look at just, I want to show you this. Look at this in this verse. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till... It till it I T 
I, Jesus, on the T, be accomplished. That's just a little two, a little two letter nugget for you. How about that one? So that's, that's your God. That's what he does in the King James Bible. That's what he'll do if you'll just believe his words. Uh, if you won't mess with it, if you won't pick up a bundle of sticks when he told you not to, if you won't disobey, if you won't presumptuously try to add something that you're not supposed to be, who gave you the authority to touch this book? That's what I want to know. Don't tell me about, oh, this good godly guys, they just, they had a good heart and they wanted to make it easier for people. Who, who gave you the authority to make that decision? This whole, where the word of a king is, there is power. Amen. That's what this thing's all about. Now, uh, I'm going to bring it home here. The Lord, that, uh, the shepherd's crook or the long arm, right? Go over to Exodus chapter 6. The Lord Jesus Christ says the, the shepherd's staff of the Father. The long arm of Jehovah. Jehovah. The, the name Jesus means Jehovah saves. Amen? Jesus saves. The whole, throughout the whole book, God's trying to tell you Jesus saves. All right, Exodus chapter 6. Look at verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. There's that dragon. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. So he's got that strong, powerful hand. Maybe he's holding that staff. You know, he thinks he's in charge. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah, all caps, was I not known to them. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. Remember, they come after Jesus. Hey, why are you coming after me like a thief? You know, who are you looking for? And like Jesus of Nazareth, I am he. And they fall back. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. You know how these guys come from Alexandria? Alexandrian manuscripts. And I will rid you out of their bondage. Those guys that go down to Egypt for wisdom, for knowledge, who love the Library of Alexandria. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people. Oh, kind of like a shepherd and, and some sheep. And I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of of the Amen. Egyptians. Wow. Brethren, when you got a King James Bible, the burden of the Egyptians, the burden of Pharaoh, the burden of doubt, of not, be, of not knowing 100% you have the words of God, was lifted. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 All right. And, and by the way, the modern versions, oh, remember I showed you Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves three times. You see Jesus and saves there. Uh, NIV and ESV, Jesus, dot, dot, dot. What you, is it going to say sticks? What is it going to say? Jesus, dot, dot, dot. Clubs. Jesus clubs, Jesus clubs. Boom, 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 boom. No wonder so many of you uh, Christians with modern versions can find, be found uh, in the clubs with Jesus on Saturday night. This was on the Sabbath. This was on the Sabbath, amen? When they came to get him. Saturday night, baby. Saturday night fever. Amen? Jesus' clubs completely destroyed it. Completely destroyed it. Amen? Jesus said, you coming at me like a thief? Remember? Remember that? Jesus doesn't address Judas. He doesn't address the guy he knows betrayed him. He addresses the multitude because he already knows about Judas. Yeah. I've lost none but the son of perdition, right? He already knows about Judas. He addresses the chief priests, the elders, the multitudes, the captains, all those guys. And you know what he says? Remember, remember who's with him? All the disciples? 
Remember he said, like, if you're, if you're coming after me in John 18, 8, he says, let these go their way. That's a good shepherd right there, man. Oh, that, come on. That's a good shepherd right there. Right. He's not going to abandon the flock. He goes, you looking for a, you looking at, you coming at me like a thief? Puts all the attention on himself, right? Then let these go their way. Modern versions change thief to a rebellion. What's the first thing you think when you think rebellion? I think of multiple people. I think January 6th. You know, I think of, I think of all the, you know, Canada, what they got to, oh man, the convoy there. You know, I think of like lots of people at play, Boston Tea Party or something. Like they have Jesus found, with, found in the clubs and he's saying, are you coming at me like you're, uh, you're after a rebellion? Remember those modern versions, that's what they try to do. They try to make it, no, Jesus wasn't coming as God to save people. It was more, he was a political leader. He was upsetting the Roman system and that's why they killed him. Very wicked. And there's a lot more I could go into, but I'm going to end it right there, brethren. I appreciate your patience, appreciate your time. But after we have done the honey test on, and checked for stickiness, I'm sorry, I, and I'm like, I'm not going to go after every modern version. That's not like, if I can get you to admit one is bad, we'll start there. Yeah. So that one's bad. So this one, it's stickier than the King James. It occurs more times, changes the first mention, changes the last mention. We went over all the other things they change. You lose the nugget of David and being staves, a stick overlaid with gold that's meant to bear the ark of God, bear the holy things of God. Just like Jesus Christ was a st stick of shittim wood, uh, a man, earthly nature, overlaid with gold, divine, king of kings, lord of lords. You miss all of those things. And you can call me crazy. You can say, oh, he's used numbers. He used first mention. It's the same old thing. And you can be miserable with your book that doesn't do anything for you. And I'm being firm because I want, like, what's it going to take someone to show you, man? What's it going to take? At least, like, show me some cool stuff. Show me some nuggets in, in your thing. I'll be like, well, actually, that's pretty cool. At least they got, it, you know, they got us there, I'll admit. I'll hold my breath. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the pure honey. Not too sticky, just perfect amount, Lord God. It's pure. It's uh, incorruptible like those staves of shittim wood. And uh, just like uh, the capital W word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, your lowercase w word of God is also a stick of shittim wood. It's made from, a tr from trees. That's where paper comes from. But it's overlaid with gold. It's divine. It's from heaven. And we thank you so much for it, Lord God. Please uh, bless us this evening. Get everyone home safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.